in post-secondary, I, I started to realize that there's, there's like a, a piece of me that was missing. Um, I was taking actually an indigenous culture class and I didn't know a lot of things. And to me that kind of struck a personal chord of like, how come I don't know these things? And, and how come I was never taught? And that kind of got me on this path of like being more engaged and learning about what actually happened to, to my community. It kind of like unearthed a lot of trauma that I didn't even know was there, it suppressed um, by my family members because who didn't want to pass that on to the youth. Initially, I had a lot of anger dealing with um, this knowledge gap, this cultural gap. Uh, it felt like a spirit gap, to be honest. Um, so but when I started sitting down and drumming, it, it was exactly like that. It was a release. It was, I felt like I belonged again. It was a peace. Ganyangeha people, Mohawk, migrated from upstate New York. I still have some family there. Um, my mother's from Nova Scotia. Uh, I have a lot of family there. My black family is from there. Um, and they migrated here for opportunities as well. That's kind of the thing. It's like a lot of people were drawn to major cities from the places that they're originally from to seek opportunities or to seek education or employment, things like that. Um, so in a sense, I feel disconnected from, from say Nova Scotia or upstate New York. Even my reserve in Ontario now, Tyendinaga. I'm also very happy that my family or my parents kind of like migrated to these places and, and met each other because that's special, right? I mean, how when you think about that journey that brought two people together, it's like almost a one in a million. <laughs> um, so I see a lot of beauty in that as well. Uh, I try not to get caught up in the things that weren't and, and I try to embrace the things that are.